what does jelly have to do with your video game choices? Keep watching to find out. Choice is one of the many things we love about games. No other medium gives us the same sense of agency, allowing us to take control of how we look, what we do and how our stories end up. But how much choice is too much? Well, as it turns out, science and psychology have the answer. In this video, we'll look at how too much choice can make you dissatisfied or make you start avoiding having options altogether. And we'll explore how your experience as a gamer is directly related to how much choice you're actually able to handle in games. Before we get started though, we've included a poll on how you approach choice in games. So go ahead and give it a try. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos on the science and psychology of games. It's time for the ways that too much choice in games can actually be a bad thing. First off, as ever, we need to define exactly what we're talking about and why it matters. Games allow us to make broad choices. We have to decide between weapons and items, between characters in a competitive game like Overwatch, <coughs> branching dialogue options, and even the very direction you choose to go when you find a fork in the road. Also, it's important that the game encourages you to make the right choice so that you, as the player, experiences the developer's intent. This is something that we've talked about before. Games use all sorts of subtle tricks to point you in the correct direction, guiding the choices you make without you knowing. To find out more and to discover how Disneyland's design influenced video game level layout, hit the card on screen now. Much of what I'll talk about today comes from an article on playerresearch.com called Spoiled for Choice, the psychology of choice overloading games and how to avoid it. And the link for that article is in the description. So let's get into those pesky details. On the surface, choice in games seems like a good thing. The broader the selection of options, the easier it is for us to make decisions that closely resemble our individual preferences. Granted, that degree of choice is great when you're doing something like creating your character, for instance. It's frustrating when you can't find the right hairdo, skin colour, or in Matt's case, beard density. But once you get into the big decisions, the research on choice suggests something quite different too much choice can actually be paralyzing. This is something called choice overload, and it was studied by Iyengar and Leper back in the year 2000. The example they use is with jelly, or jam if you're from the UK. Now stay with me. The study showed that when subjects were given a choice between six jellies or 24, they were far more likely to make a choice from the more limited selection. The choice between 24 jellies was just overwhelming and they couldn't decide, and many people just opted out of making a choice altogether. So what does this have to do with games? Well, if you go into the shop and there's too many types of armour to choose from, you're more likely to put off making a decision or, more worryingly, quit the game altogether when you can't choose. And if you're shouting, I'd never do that, this is all balanced out by how invested you are. If you've invested your money or time, you're less likely to quit. Behold, my genius. Cash first. The same article talks about a study by Arks and Bloomer from 1985 that shows you're more likely to persevere with something you've sunk resources into. So, if you paid full price for a new release, for example, these sort of early decisions won't put you off. But if you've just rolled the dice on a new game in the Steam sale, you're more likely to quit if the first thing you see is a choice of 20 wildly different characters. To sum it up, too much choice too early on can be a deal breaker. And that leads me to my next point. Not only is too much choice dangerous, it also matters when you make decisions and how experienced you are as a player. Being confronted with a broad selection of options early on in an unfamiliar game can be very off-putting for a fresh player. Which of these is the best gun? Which skill should I choose first? The Spoiled for Choice article references a 2003 study by Chernov that suggests that new players are likely to struggle with early decisions and this could contribute to them giving up on the game altogether. This is part of the reason that the most popular online games are relatively simple. Conversely, experienced players actually need more choice, and I'll come on to that later on. Like all game design, this is a balancing act. For instance, introducing complicated mechanics like crafting too late in a game can also have a negative effect. If, for example, you play Fallout 4 for 25 levels before you start exploring the crafting options, it's more likely that you'll end up ignoring them altogether. 
This means that developers have to be especially careful in the early stages of a game. You can't overwhelm players with so much choice that they stop playing, but also you can't give them so much freedom that they avoid entire submenus. The truth is though, if you don't do something during your first 15 hours or so of a game, it's unlikely that you'll want to start afterwards. TLDR version, game design is hard. Interestingly, it's even possible to put a specific number on how much choice is too much. The overload effect officially kicks in when there are more than seven options to pick from. When it comes to games, this is all about how developers want you, the player, to feel after your choice. The Iyengar and Leper study looked at how choosing from an excessively large set of options was often less satisfying for the player. The bigger the set of options, the less committed that a person will be. On the one hand, if you're making an inconsequential decision, or one that means you're able to eventually try all of those options, this won't be an issue. Choosing a power in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, for instance, or upgrading a skill in Yakuza. In fact, you might want to keep playing to unlock everything. So that means that small numbers of inconsequential choices make you feel good. But if the decision is final, such as romantic dialogue choices or a game ending, committing players can lead to dissatisfaction and damage their enjoyment of the game. This is even worse if the finality of that decision is only apparent after the fact, so you don't know you've made a final choice until it's too late. I shouldn't have to explain myself to you, Kate. This is why most games offer binary choices when it comes to big, difficult decisions, and why you'll probably always look up a guide before you choose. You're not coming with us. I'll die out here. I don't care. This is also where that magic number seven comes in. Smaller sets of options are more psychologically manageable. The 2003 Chernev study confirmed that people perform poorly at tasks that require them to hold many more than seven items in their working memory. And this is true of decisions in games too. Our brains want to compare and compartmentalize decisions, and it's easier to make an informed choice with fewer options. Anecdotally, this is why it's nice when a game tells you the correct path, leaving you free to explore the wrong ones, safe in the knowledge that you're not committing to anything. Think Bioshock Infinite's breadcrumb trail and the lure of going off track to search through bins for candy and hot dogs when you know that it won't affect the story. So games that handle choice well are the ones that drip feed it to us, those that let us unlock more skills over time or let us find more blueprints for items to craft. You'd be completely overwhelmed if you had all that choice at the start, but having plenty of choice by the end feels like the game is constantly delivering new things. But, and here's the flip side, experienced players don't suffer from the same levels of choice overload. If you're an experienced player of a genre, your understanding of a new game is massively increased, regardless of whether you've played that specific title. It means that while everyone's first few games of Fortnite or Apex Legends are overwhelming, if someone has experience of Battle Royale games, they'll be much happier, much faster than novice players. Going back to the Chernev study that I mentioned earlier then, when it comes to choice, people who have already developed a greater understanding of what's on offer will be much happier to choose from a far wider selection of choices. These experienced players don't just like more choice, they actually prefer it to a smaller offering. It means they can pick a selection that most accurately defines their playstyle. So more than seven choices aren't always overwhelming if you've got experience of what's on offer. For instance, if you played Far Cry 5, you'll probably know that in Far Cry New Dawn, it makes sense to upgrade your extra weapon slot before anything else, or perhaps add a set of binoculars early on. Your choices of skills are vast, but you understand the selection and how it will benefit you as a player. Seven doesn't matter here. Meanwhile, if you haven't played the game before, this might seem like an overwhelming amount of choice so early on in the game, and you'll be dissatisfied with the selection you make. Like choice FOMO, you'll always always feel like you could have had something better. A less experienced player might like these skills to unlock as you progress, or even be categorised just so you feel better choosing between a smaller number. So that's why too much choice in games can be damaging. Let us know what you think in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe to Logitech G for more science and psychology videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, you can hit that notification bell so you know exactly when our next video lands.